All right, welcome back to Fucking Talks, the podcast, episode 25. Today on the show, they're going to put a child porn apologist on the Supreme Court, and we're probably just going to take it. The boys are girls in this week's Cringe of the Week. Once again, Dan Crenshaw says, I'm the establishment. We open our Zelensky file for a very solid Ukraine section, and I give you guys tips on how to survive during inflation. All this and more. It's Fucking Talks, the podcast, episode 25. Rank the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck the podcast featuring Richard Rapp. One for, a true one for one. Are you gonna you're done with that? I think I just did it. All right. That was one for one. We nailed it. Fair. Pretty smooth. Yep. Uh, we're coming into some quick housekeeping, as we always do before the show starts. Um, first things first, I just have written, I can't find a, a seafood tower anywhere in St. Pete. Richard Rapway went on a, and I went on an adventure last week. Yeah, that was dark. We were looking for a seafood tower. Just I wanted crab, shrimp, whatever. Cold. On ice. Served to us. Creamy, creamy sauce. I wanted to devour that. Aioli. We finally found a place that had it and... It was just off the menu. Yeah, no, everything didn't have it. St. Pete is like an on the water town, and no one can serve us a seafood tower anymore. Uh, well, the, not- the waiter was well. The waiter was also extremely weird. I was like, "Why is the seafood tower not here?" And he basically refused to answer. He wouldn't he, give yeah. us the answer. He and wouldn't we were, tell us. We were like, "We're about to drop two hundred bucks on this." Yeah, like, and now we're getting hors d'oeuvres and leaving. I was about to do a seafood tower for two twice. <laughs> That's now I can't do anything. Now I can only eat chicken at the seafood restaurant. All you have is chicken wings so. and the chicken sandwich. That's Doesn't make sense, St. Pete. We oh, and you asked him. You go, is this is this related to Joe Byron or, or Ukraine? <laughs> yeah, is it related to that, or is it the the reggae fest in town that should have been canceled? Uh, yeah, very hectic week in St. Pete for us. Um, speaking of food, uh, Richard Rapway, I actually saved this. I have not shown Richard Rapway this. There was a video of you going viral okay. online. I have not shown you until now. Here we go. I think something happened with like a food order you you put out. Yeah, probably. Let's see it. Where's my salad? I forgot to order salad on my... <laughs> was that you, Richard Rapp? Yeah. They got to order yeah, your salad? I always forget the salad. Oh, they man. I always say add it at the last minute, and I never add it. You so. always forgot. I see you're wearing Carhartt beanie. Yeah, I am. What's that about? Nothing. I just owned the beanie for a long time, and I'm a little under the weather right now. I'm feeling a little sick, a little chilly, so I'm wearing a beanie. Um, no destroying of it? No, I'm not one of those people. I don't set anything on fire. I don't carve out the little logo. I just wear it until it's done, and yeah. then I don't buy from the company again. That's pretty fair. And then if you do destroy it, what are you going to do? Buy Dickies instead yeah, or some go, other company who's probably another, the same thing? They're going to betray me in a week. Yeah. They're going to have Leah Thomas on a commercial in two days after <laughs> I buy it. So, <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, housekeeping, we're almost through. The show's about to start. This is just some things we have to get settled before the show. Uh, I read this article uh, about some guy who's like Gen- uh, Genghis Khan's descendant yeah. who is no longer in power <laughs> somewhere. So that Genghis Khan and his, his blood ruled for over 800 years uninterrupted. So obviously look at this photo. I mean, it makes me kind of think I have the Genghis Khan gene. Yeah. Isn't it like 2% of the world or something? There is a number. And it's like, you know, I, I mean, look at the picture. Mm-hmm. I have that look. I would say DJ Khaled is has the Genghis Khan gene as well. I would say Pavarotti, maybe Action Bronson. Mm. People like that kind of all have that same Genghis Khan gene, it looks like. What about like Newman from Seinfeld? No. I don't he looks think. at Genghis. No, can't see it. Um, on, I actually want to say something about this because – at one point, like I think it might have been Hardcore History with Dan Carlin or something, started doing a deep dive on Genghis Khan. And everybody, it was like a Kiev Kiev situation where everybody all of a sudden was like, you know, it was actually Genghis, Genghis Khan. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm not going back. I had, I, ten, I had 10 plus years of Genghis. I don't change. So, and then also the Kiev Kiev. Yeah. It's like, that's the biggest giveaway. Like the people who are on the base side uh-huh. for the most part, this is like my sample study. I've been, I've been watching people who say Kiev are probably based and people who say Kiev and changed now that everyone's saying Kiev yeah. are probably not. Yeah. Their opinions change just like their pronunciations did. Exactly. So, so you can never change. I actually learned this lesson in LA because there was a place 902 one 
Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, pho. Oh, duh, right? It's pho. Then everyone started saying pho. It's pho. It's acai bowl. Yeah. It's not pho. 9021 pho. Yeah. So I That's not that. what they were going for. <laughs> yeah. 9021 pho. So I don't change. We don't change the pronunciations. Really mo- quick moving on. Uh, we're almost out of this. Uh, Batman people really got mad at me last week. Yeah, uh, and I was I did not see it, so people were just like saying you missed the whole point, bro. You missed the whole point, whatever. Okay, it's emo early Batman, right? It's emo early Batman, and then people were like, "Dude, this is like our story. Like, we are Robert Pattinson Batman." And I was like, "No, we're not, dude. I was the captain of the football team in high school. I went to prom <laughs> with the cheerleader. I was very cool. Like, I'm not. I don't relate to <laughs> emo Batman. He doesn't even have any muscles, so he can't beat anybody up. So it's just like emo detective guy in the costume the whole time." Hey. Didn't even mention that last week, but that's the harsh truth. It's just emo guy in a costume doing a whole detective thing. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, and yeah. not everyone's going to agree. So. Everyone is. And then just a quick bit. We saw some funny memes about uh, Batman. This video went pretty viral. It's pretty good. This is like a Christian Bale Batman. POV, you're swimming in Gotham City. No diving. <laughs> Like, that's the whole movie. No diving. <laughs> so, yeah, these are hilarious. This guy was doing, like, minor infraction stuff. Like, he, he dove in a three-and-a-half-foot uh, swimming pool. My favorite is the the guy drops a gum wrapper on the ground, and Batman comes up and goes, litter bug. <laughs> just, <laughs> just absolutely just kills, kills him. him. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I was right about that. People are starting to come around. You'll see. I'll be proven right on that. <laughs> Last thing of, home, of uh, housekeeping. Um... I don't even know what the point of this bit is anymore. He says, just says, did you know Jordan? <laughs> it says, did you know Jordan Peterson got his doctorate from University of Phoenix <laughs> online? So it's not true, right? It's not it's true. Just it's just, I don't even know where I was going with that. Uh, I wrote that down a couple of days ago. All and- right. Fair warning. He never tells me what's going on in housekeeping. I just kind of find it later. So yeah. I'm absolved from that. I. All right, before we get into the show, this show is obviously brought to you by ShopLuckus.com, best merch in the game. Guys, we have Trader Joe's, The Clintons, Become Unpinnable, Crenshaw Sucks, the based mug that you see every week. Has that been enough to make your brain things go and buy it now? Yeah. The impulses, you see it enough times to go buy the base mug? Now Shop I need Lu- it. <laughs> ShopLuckus.com, where you get it. Uh, use code Jerry, 15% off. We also have a newsletter, a weekly newsletter. Every Friday, a newsletter goes out with all the week's content and a little bit of a write-up. Check that out the link is in the description takes 10 seconds to sign up we also have a bonus land now on the show Uh, after this episode is done we have an extra 20 to 25 minutes of bonus land this week's topics are bob saget what happened to him there's a little bit of a dating section and then there's a dave rubin and his buddy acquired a baby section Ooh, that's <laughs> spicy, juicy. spicy. It's funny because we had to stay consistent. We were talking about uh, Don Lemon acquiring a baby or other people. So mm-hmm. so what's our take on that going to be? What's our take going to be? Patreon.com slash Fleckus or YouTube. Join links in the description. And finally, but not least, and last but not least, we have a Fleckus Clips channel. It's brand new. A lot of people were complaining that I'm unfunny and I shouldn't have a show this long and go back on the street. <laughs> and I wish these were shorter. I can't First watch you wanted timestamps. Then you wanted clips. Soon it's going to be like three second flashes of the show. Like, <laughs> ah, here's, here's Fleckus reactions to things. It's, for, it's content for babies is what you guys want. And it's GIFs eventually. It's just <laughs> GIFs with no sound. So if you guys like Fleckus and you want to see Fleckus clips, all different types of content chopped up in short palatable clips check out the fleckus clips channel it is linked in the description let's get into the show we had one clip doing numbers on that clip channel yeah we thousand we, views we got a thousand <laughs> views on one of them we've completely like reset the scoreboard and i'm fully engaged in the clip uh the fleckus clips channel mm-hmm. uh really quick we are going to get into a quick fighting section obviously we're fighting people all the time here on the show dan crenshaw we're not going to harp on this We're not going to make this too long. We're not going to make this the whole show like we always do. But Dan Crenshaw responded uh, in a podcast, and he called us the establishment. Hearing things, right? Because, look, I have enemies, of course, on the right. That's that's what you're getting at, effectively. Um, And, look, it's that's the establishment that doesn't want people like me to rise too quickly. And what's, when I say what's the establishment, exactly, that's I'm going to explain that because I I view the establishment <laughs> differently than what most people say the establishment is. Most people say the establishment is Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell and the RNC. That's not the establishment. They, they they're trying to hang on by a thread. 
Um, they're trying to wrangle cats. Okay, that's that's what leadership is is doing. The establishment is these sort of wannabe social media influencers, these radio hosts, these podcasters. Um, it's mostly these folks in the media that are that are that are so ingrained in the cancel culture of the right. That's that's what I'm fighting against. Hmm. And, uh, so that's we're the establishment, not Mitch McConnell, the guy who stood back while the whole country was getting looted for 50 years and yeah. watched it and kind watched of, NAFTA, watched everything. <laughs> not the guy who goes out to dinner with Chuck Schumer, goes and gets steaks. And yeah. says, How are we going to do the best of this? It's us, the people who are trying to sell T-shirts yeah. <laughs> and oh not even God. monetize and like getting in trouble with everybody. We're the establishment. We're the people. I, I was like not even born probably when Mitch McConnell got into office. Uh, of course you weren't. I showed up on the scene five years ago. Yeah, like with a wave of Trump enthusiasm and like, hey, the media's gone crazy. What are we doing? Yeah, and a call in my heart where I'm like, I can kind of do the right thing here and pick the correct side, even though it's unpopular, and fight for what's good and stand up for the country because when people let it get out of hand, that's what I thought I was doing. But now you're just bottling up Dan Crenshaw. <laughs> you're just not out, letting him do his agenda. <laughs> turns out I'm the establishment and Dan Crenshaw's the good guy. Yeah, dude, not Kevin McCarthy, not like the people who are Liz running Cheney? things. That's not my the friend. Who, not, not the people who write in the little piece of the bill like, oh, and then we give $20 million to this park who helped me. Those are, you're yeah, the establishment. I'm the establishment. So nice, nice try, Dan. Um, let's just stop. Is, that's what I think. Dan, let's just not escalate this any further. Look what happened to Dan Crenshaw. We've been roasting him on the show for weeks, and now everyone's roasting him. Yeah. You don't want to turn out like that. Let's just stop this now. Doesn't have to go further. <laughs> What uh, happens? What do you think would happen if it went further? If Dan swung on you, what would happen? If Dan swung on me personally by name, mm -hmm. uh, there would be a nonviolent, obviously, no, nothing is ever going to be violent, never going to threaten a congressperson. Of course. But the retaliation from me, what do they say? What, what does like, Trump say? What does like, the American military say? It's like something you've never if seen you before. If you fuck with me, yeah. <laughs> There'll be a response you've never seen before. <laughs> um, which... And it might be front page news, Dan. You don't want this fight. It's done. It's over. You don't want this fight. Let's just move on. Yeah. And then did you see Crenshaw tweeted the other day, uh, the U.S. Congress is, uh, or he said, the only propaganda is being perpetuated by Russia. And then, oh, he, yeah. had, and then he had that tweet was still up. The snake island says, go F yourself. Goes, Goes to, to Kiev. Kiev. Yeah. Woman passes out sunflower seeds so they grow flowers when they die. Like, And then the prop, only propaganda prop, is prop. Russian propaganda. It's like, you're some Muppet, dude. Yeah. So- so yeah, no, no more fighting, Dan. Um, uh, you still want to? Neither do I. Uh, moving on. <laughs> we have something, Dan. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. We're not bluffing. We have the whole deck. The dealer, Come find the out dealer's my buddy. <laughs> we we were dealing from the bottom, and you don't even know how to spot that. Moving on. Uh, cringe of the week. Let's get into some good cringe of the week. This week's Cringe of the Week is double length. Took a little off of the Urban Decay section, and we went all in on Cringe of the Week. Number one, swim meet bathroom lady. This is at the NCAA swim finals. Women, I'm asking you, please do not use women's faces. It girl, makes them feel uncomfortable. My girls and the other women I am with very comfortable with me in right. the bathroom. Well, fortunately, I'm not your daughter, and my daughter is also not your daughter. No, that's right. And she so would she feel, uh, 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 she would feel very uncomfortable. No, I, right. Now, no, no, you excuse interrupted me. me. Excuse you me. Interrupted I'm not here me. for a debate. Back to you, Mike. Right. I would like to, I would ask you to please call up your daughter. So the lady's wearing a shirt that says, I'm not a vet, but I know what a dog is. So <laughs> she's that lady. Yeah, she's that uh, lady. Talking to a, a weird guy in long hair, pretending to do shit with his daughters and have a loving family. Daughters. I'm and, a mother. And it's all about like appeasing the, the guy in the dress with the long hair who thinks he's a girl. It's about appeasing him. Oh, the people I'm with are comfortable. I would be comfortable if I were to use this bathroom. This is the bathroom I'm comfortable in. And it's like, what about everyone else? Who are we prioritizing here? The 0.1%. The 0.1% very mentally ill person mm. or women and children, young girls and women who should be we should be looking out for as a society. Yeah, what's that's society who should, built for? Exactly. That's who should be comfortable. We should do a survey and go, all right. Are 99 out of 100, 90, 999 people out of 1,000 comfortable if everyone follows these rules? Who's not comfortable? This person. Yeah. Well, you're kind of a dude anyway. Go be uncomfortable in the men's bathroom. Yeah, you're you're the pro you're the weirdo. I don't know what else. We're just trying to live in society that was here five years ago. 
Um, so yeah. uh, I guess, oh, should we change it all? No. And you're blowing up the swim team. My favorite is with this Leah Thomas swim stuff. Obviously, we've been talking about Leah for a long time. Um, so we're ahead of the game, way ahead. We knew this was going to happen. Unfortunately, we didn't get any betting action on it. So we didn't actually monetize this. But um, it's like you're arguing anybody who's trans or are arguing for trans rights coming to the NCAA thing where the girls win it or where Leah is a man winning. It's like, why are you arguing? Like, just understand that we're right. You know, you're like, oh, look, she finished in the middle of the pack. It's like, nah, she won. And <laughs> it's you're you're not arguing for something good right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like you don't have the data, the facts on your side immediately after Leah Thomas gets on the podium and goes, yeah, I'm competing against myself. I'm ignoring the noise. And it's like, nice yeah. voice, Leah. You're not like, you're not, uh, you're not like, um, you weren't legitimately wronged. Yeah. And it's like, now you have a case. This is what the, you know, the truth is. It's what we should fight for. It's the same thing we saw with COVID too. It's like, we're uh, appeasing the scaredest people, the most deranged people who are going to freak out about COVID instead of like doing what's best for 99.9% .9 of the population. Yeah. It's lowest common denominator. Uh, catering. We're catering to the LCD. And then if you stand for common sense and what's right, now you're the hateful person. And then, then they are able to pretend the percentages are way different when pretty much everybody knows what the truth is and who should be in what bathroom and yeah. who should be prioritized with comfort and who's kind of a mentally ill person dealing with some stuff. Yeah. And then the slippery slope part of it, like where, dude, nothing's going to happen. Like She just wants to use the bathroom. Respect her. And then there's the Virginia Loud Loudoun County sexual assault on that daughter, mm -hmm. that person. So we're developing data now. Now we're getting the data for the talking points. Yeah. And at what cost? You know, a young girl being assaulted. The other transgender girl that we, transgender girl that we talked about um, who was 18 and a man or mm. 17 and a man and then got a youth sentence and was like, yeah, the jail, they're just letting me go <laughs> on the phone with his dad. And it's like, are you kidding me, guys? So we're- Society is actively in the negative part of this where yeah. like the bad things are happening and it's like, well, how bad is it? It's like, you know, oh, we introduced, fent we created a new drug, Oxycontin. It's like, well, how bad is it? We won't know for a few years. You know, it's <laughs> Hopefully like, the, good. yeah, it's the same thing. Well, we're sure it's good. Disney will tell you and whoever else, but mm -hmm. like, it's not good. And, uh, it's going to hurt a lot of people. Exactly. And I saw this really informative graph about it. Uh, and it said, what will happen if gay marriage is legalized? And then obviously the whole graph is gay people will get married as if that's it's a pie it. chart. That's 100 percent. Gay people will get married as if that's no effects. It. And then all the other ones that were put in at the time as a joke, I guess, a third world war will break out. Various plagues, locusts, frogs, etc. will erupt. Schools will begin teaching kids how to have gay sex. The terrorists <laughs> will win. Basically, all those things. Happen. Four for four. <laughs> yeah. Third world war happening now. COVID. Schools will begin teaching kids how to have gay sex. And then the terrorists will win. And it's like the Taliban are a legitimate regime now. So. Yeah, we bailed out of Afghanistan ASAP. So, yeah, the thing you said was a bit basically all happened and came true. Moving on, number two, teacher coming out to the students. The great anxiety of the day today is that I'm going to have to deal with coming out to my students. I know most of them are just going to assume it already, but for the few that don't, That'll be a fun conversation, if it comes to that. So what do you... My anxiety of the day is something that I'm doing that I don't have to do. That it, you shouldn't do it is inappropriate, but you're taking it upon yourself. I'm going to be uncomfortable, but I'm going to talk to the students about my sex life. Just a narcissist, egomaniac. I think you go to jail for this in the 90s. <laughs> you should. You should. This is like a dad gets to come in a pickup truck and beat the shit out of you. If you say, <laughs> what you say to my kid? And then he just beats your ass. And the principal just goes, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Thompson's not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, no, for real. I mean, that's obviously a joke, but uh, these people are just getting one-on-one -on -one time with your kids or one-on-20 time with your kids in an authority role. And uh, molding their brain clay however they see fit. Yeah. You can't homeschool your kids because they'll be weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> send them to public school. But 20% of Gen Z is now LGBTQ or whatever. Yeah, the send stat them was. to public school to have their brain molded. And then you can turn into the kids in clip number three LGBT school pride parade. Oh, my God. So this was in Austin. Austin, Texas. Yay, cowboys. Texas. The assistant principal posted this video mm. and then deleted it. So it's like, oh, 
dude, look at me, what we're doing. And then it's like, oh, well, oh, the heat's too hot. Yeah, they didn't, yeah. Even, they didn't even realize it was like a, a very bad thing for, for some people. So it's funny because at, at some sometimes you have kids like at a school or whatever. It's like, we're going to organize a walkout. We're against this, like, and it's like, oh, little protesters doing what they th- what they want to do, but now it's just like teachers organizing this. We saw it with the BLM mm-hmm. march, and like, there's always a fat woman somewhere in there mm-hmm. leading the kids. There's the fat teacher. There's the fat teacher off to the side waving the flag aggressively. Everyone else is just walking, and they're all wearing masks too. Yeah, they're all in masks, of course. It's like, why are they? Why are they doing LGBT stuff? And it's like, why are they in masks? There's fat woman teacher number two. What happens when you mold these kids and they have to wear the mask that does nothing? And then LGBT stuff. It's like, what do? You, what's the soft clay becoming when you start pushing it and pulling it that direction? My little activists. Yeah, but you can. You know, people will debate. Should we be saying the Pledge of Allegiance in school? Mm-hmm. And they'll, that'll come up for a debate. But this, send it. Yeah. Um, moving on, number four. This is a funny thing we saw was on Reddit. Uh, I'm stuck in the elevator. <laughs> this is like a post yeah. from Reddit. The, uh, this is, yeah. Guy said, electricity went out and I had a small meltdown at work today. And he posts in like some work chat. Guys, I'm stuck in the WeWork lift. Like the elevator. And then Slackbot goes, hi, guys is a gendered term or a gendered pronoun. We recommend alternatives like folks, all, everyone, y'all, team, crew, etc. We appreciate your helping and building an inclusive workplace and head out. So that's like a bot telling him like, don't say guys. And he goes, folks, I'm stuck in the WeWork <laughs> elevator. I'm stuck in the folks. I'm stuck in the elevator. Like, again, literally a real problem. Yeah. And is happening and it's now nah, you said it wrong. It's like a metaphor for now. It's like there's a there's a war going on, all these things, and we have to fight for the trans person. Always. The one percent of one percent. Moving on. <laughs> Clip five. Sav with one N. Been doing great work. She is now back on the streets and she's doing so well. Big fan of hers and she's a friend of the show. Yeah. Um, Look so, at this interview she did with a person who competed against a trans athlete in cross country. Yes against transgender track and field athlete June Eastwood, correct? Yes. What was it like competing? Um, I personally competed against uh, June in the DMR, um, so it was the distance medley relay, and we had different legs, and when I was waiting and I was cheering on my teammate, there were coaches on the sidelines, obviously, and they'll tell you sort of like, this is your cue, or like, this is where you're at, or come on, push it, go faster, and something that was really hard for me to hear was um, June's coach was on the sidelines telling June to slow down as June was in first place. And so that was something that was a true sticking point for me in this whole situation because I realized that's so that this sad. wasn't difficult. It's honestly you. dark. June yeah. It's incredibly dark. Slow down. Before. It's like a scene from The Incredibles where the kid's got super powers and the dad goes, don't win the race by too much. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a, exactly that. So A, the, the transgender person in this example knows it. They know it's wrong. The coach knows it. Mm-hmm. And then the only person who doesn't know it, I guess, is the NCAA who goes palms, shoulders and palms, whatever. Yeah. And then all the other girls who race against it just get smoked. Yeah. It's very sad. And that's a very eye opening take. It's not even like, you know, go try your hardest, do your best and whatever happens, happens. It's just you're winning by too much. Slow down. It's too obvious. So it's not competition. It's like, oh, I just want to compete. I just want to compete. It's not competition at that point. If you're slowing down, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, You're just like on a bad so track. So if you just want to compete, why don't you go take 800th place against the men? Yeah. Like if you just want to compete, I'll, you, I'll show you where you are, where you fall. And you can have some competition where you can work your way up from there. Yeah. You're not competing if you start off by first by a lot. Yeah. You have somewhere to go. You're like, ah, 800? Maybe I'll get to the 700s next week. Instead yeah. of slow down, you're destroying the women too much. I just want to compete. It's like you just want a trophy. You, yeah. just, you just want to win. You just want a win. I think that's what Leah Thomas's motivation is too. I think it could be some dark thing where she like hates women and whatever. And yeah, it's not sincere. This no, I person, think it's- I, th- I think it's less hate women and more just me, me, me. Yeah. It's all a me thing. And it's like whatever I can do to get anything. Mm-hmm. And then negative attention, it doesn't really matter as long as it's attention, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, attention. I'm calling it now. Leah Thomas is going to be in a Nike commercial by the end of June. That's a That gives them a month or two to film, a month or two to get, get it, it on the books. Let her sign the contract. She's out of college now probably. So well, she N- NCAA people can take money now. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's who's going to get it. So they're going to get rewarded by the – all the trans people are going to get rewarded by the corporations. They're going to get the best deals. Yep. Can't wait to Atta see boy, it. boy, boys. Atta boy, men. Men stay winning. Uh, moving on to our next section. This is the extended part of Cringe of the Week. 
This might make some people upset. And I kind of wonder. This is a pet project for me. Yeah. So Disney adults, everyone knows a few of them. I'm sure there's some watching right now. Yeah. I wonder if this is a bad idea to keep attacking these groups. You know, I attack Eventually, Van there's no one's left except like the one white guy who <laughs> likes sports. He's like, hell yeah, boys, love the show. <laughs> exactly. It's like all the Dan Crenshaw fans hate me. All the people that pretended they could see Batman hate me. Pitbull uh, people the hate pit you. Pitbull people hate me now. And it's like now the Disney people are are going to maybe not well, like me. But it's like, if you agree I'd with like all the, if you agree with all the takes so far, let me know in the comments if yeah. you've been. If, you if go, you're a true tip of the spear, <laughs> number one, five fan. for five. Well, I think people are more resilient than that, and it's like, all right, I didn't agree with him on Batman, but it's a good show, you know. Yeah, I think the people are a little more resilient, and it's a bit based show, and who cares? I didn't even pay attention to Batman that much. It's like <laughs> I'm not, I didn't go into it with like the comic book background. I was like, I can't see the movie. Um, so this is a Disney adult. I saw this clip last week, and it stood out to me. Crying in Disneyland, basically when she, when she sees the tower. Basically, the caption was like, "This was my first time seeing the Magic Kingdom or something." It was some castle yeah. in Disney. Now and I start crying. She looks up. She hey sees now, it. Hey now, this is what She's wearing the Mickey Mouse hat. She's got little tattoos. Probably one that says Harry Potter or something. Yeah. So. Hey now, the, and it's like a tourist place. She's crying at a tourist trap. Yeah. You're crying. You're, you're, you're going to throw up when you see Cinderella, some failed actress who lives in Orlando. Like, <laughs> like this is what you get upset about. What would make you cry like that? Like a real, like a World War II veteran crying himself while he, like his voice trembling while he tells a story. And like, like salutes the flag, barely standing he, up. He can't even stand and he's doing it anyway. In he front remembers. of like a BLM person kneeling. That would be, <laughs> that would be, yeah, that it, would make me maybe go or make me cry like some sort of horrific accident. You know, mm -hmm. you think really hard about how many people's lives were lost, stuff like that. Yeah. But these people like they LARP, they, they love it. They're adult Disney people. It's all the same. It's Harry Potter, it's Harry Disney Potter playing. escapism. Yeah. Like I can't suspend disbelief. For pretty much anything. I went to a tactical training thing, scenario training. I, I went like 80%. I couldn't like fully pretend. Yeah. <laughs> and these people come into Harry Potter land at Disney World or whatever, and they Got they my lose butter it. beer. Got they, my butter they beer. They absolutely Look at me. lose it. I'm such it. a Slyffindor. <laughs> like whatever the fuck yeah, it is. They absolutely lose it. Um, and it's like, that's why you can run a, a sex trafficking ring out of that place. Out of Disney, yep. yeah. And everything is for the adults now is the huge difference too. So at this point, like Disney is just for these adults who are LARPing and playing Harry Potter and they go cry and they see Cinderella and they get happy and yeah. they, you know, all this stupid stuff. You'll never believe what happened when I ran into Gaston. I had been waiting for three days to find him. Yeah. So here, I'm going to play another video. This parade, it was like the first parade since COVID ended, right? And it's like Cinderella on a float, blah, blah, blah. There's more adults than kids. Mm-hmm. So it's becoming this thing where it's an escapism and then the adults go and they buy a $40 smoothie or like a sweatshirt that's $95. And yeah. it's all like a price gouging, like it consumerism yeah, based thing it, where it's like they have like Disney has the choke on these people and Disney used to be a place for families. And I want to say they go on vacation and they uh, spend their money. Disney was built off the backs of Christian families with disposable income. You yeah. know what I mean? I have three kids and we can we can probably fit in two hotel rooms and we'll go for a long weekend and it's uh it's eighteen hundred bucks. And that was like in the nineties, you know? Mm -hmm. And now it's like, okay, the Star Wars experience, that's an extra five hundred. And then it's just become like this price gouge cash cow thing. And now they're getting more into politics as well. Everything is geared to the adult Disney people now too. And exactly. the adult Disney people are all pro LGBT. Well, because they're, they love fantasy land. They love, oh my God, well, a princess wouldn't be mean to that person. Yeah. She would accept them into their kingdom and they would live happily ever after. And then it's like they relay that message onto Disney corporate, who now obviously is deep state uh, tentacle. And basically it's like, oh, we need to literally make more LGBT content for kids. That's what they said they're going to do. Yeah. So that's what Disney is up to now. It's like it was meant for kids and families. Then it got taken over by LARPer uh, man children that never grew up. Yeah. Th this girl who cried, like, I don't want to rip into her too yeah, much. I feel bad for it's her. It's super cringe. You should stop. You, you shouldn't have this emotional response. Maybe have a child. You're 28, probably. What's, yeah. what's the vibe on this girl? Maybe you sh maybe you need a child or or a dog even or something. Because yeah, and also 
if this was really like a Disney fantasy land where all the characters are out like playing themselves, shouldn't the the quote villains kind of be like putting an opposing view out there? Like, yeah. doesn't Gaston think gays are disgusting? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't Cruella DeVille just Cruella really? Cruella goes, ah, <sighs> gays, not in my house. Yeah. Like, we need something I to counterbalance. I won't tolerate it. So, no, is that not true? Like, isn't there some, isn't the villain going to be going against them or now the villains are all good guys, I guess? Yeah, there's They're no all, there's no controversy other than they stole the puppies for yeah. t- 20 minutes. Gaston wouldn't be having this. John Doyle has a great video on uh, neo-Gastonism. I recommend that to everybody. It's a great watch from I our buddy John Doyle. I have not seen it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and then Disney has like these logos like never too old or whatever. And it's just so strange to me how they're targeting adults with like disposable income. And it's like, oh, dude, yeah, my student loans are bad. I don't have a house yet, but let me go drop three grand on Disney and cry when I see the the thing. Some actress from who lives in Orlando. Ugh. These people live in Orlando. It's one of the worst places on earth. It's documented. And I want to be clear. <laughs> it's one of the worst places you can well, go. I want to be clear, too. It's like, you can like Disney. You can like Disney content. You can have fun movies. And if you have kids, you probably should. I'd watch the old ones. I wouldn't watch the new Buzz Lightyear with the gay kiss or other mm-hmm. shit like that that you have to explain to your kids. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just an extremism, a tipping point that happens with these people. And, and that's another one of our corporations just selling out over time. It well starts at one as one thing and now it's ushering in something else. And then it's a thing you built it off of the families aren't liking what you're ushering in, but it's not about what people like anymore. It's about caving into the globalist cabal. Yeah. It's like st- buy swampland in Orlando, turn it into a thing, convince families to spend their money at it. They do. They love it. It's great. Scale. And scale, scale, scale. We got one in China now. We got one in here, uh, in LA and Orlando. And then betray all those principles and start pushing a political agenda just somehow gets in there for uh, the $250 billion megacorp. Mm. Strange. Interesting how that works. And you know what I never understood? I think I'm not a for cancel culture. I'm not a cancel person. But Lumiere... The candle that's lit in Beauty and the Beast? From Beauty and the Beast. They, and I've always thought, if you had like an OCD type person, mm-hmm. someone who, you know, checks, make sure the stove is off a million times, the door is locked. Yeah, I close one, the gar- two, three, so I don't die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, the garage door. Did I close the garage? Like, yeah, I did. Oh, is the door locked? You think about it. Where did I, is my car in a safe spot? And it's like, now you have to think about, is that candle going to light itself and run around the house when I'm gone? <laughs> <laughs> my curtains are going to go my straight curtains. up in flames. Is that, and you're watching on like the ring cam on your iPad and like, oh, the candle's running around. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I would act, hey, that would actually make some people crazy. I've always wondered. It's an OCD person's nightmare. It's Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast. A couple more points on Disney. So they inserted themselves into the Florida don't say gay thing, which uh, is fake. It never says that. And it's literally about not teaching kindergartners uh, sex stuff. gay sex stuff. Um, so Disney, of course, has to do that. Their employees do a walkout. But at the same time, in conjunction, four Disney employees were arrested in a – a child sex trafficking ring and a, or, or just a sex trafficking ring in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to say like, all right, you know, oh, these are the executives. It's like a lifeguard. It's mm-hmm. like some low level employee, but like, don't throw stones guys. Maybe this stuff is probably, maybe this stuff should just be kept separate. You know, did you ever think you had to merge all leftist politics into your little kingdom? Yeah. Because I understand that's what the adults want, but the adults who have kids, they don't want that. Mm-hmm. So good luck, we're, we're Disney. We're appeasing the wrong people. And you mentioned this before. Um, there's an article, Buzz Lightyear is doing gay stuff now. Yeah. What's the headline? The headline is, uh, same-sex kiss has been restored in Pixar's upcoming film, Lightyear, following staff uproar over Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill. So they have a gay kiss in there. Mm-hmm. They took it out. Buzz they're Lightyear's like, doing gay stuff now. Buzz Lightyear's doing butt stuff. He's yeah. fucking, his suit has a Buzz hole Buzz Lightyear, out. more like buzzed off light beers. All right, nice. Buzz. Nice one, bro. You got it. You're sick. Hey, with <laughs> Buzz Night Queers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that one. I don't me. have any. All right, so uh, Buzz Lightyear, Butt yeah. based peers. Yeah, so they, t- <laughs> so they took it out or something, um, and then they put it back because their employees were so gay that they wanted to. 
Um, and the funny thing is I posted a meme the other day that was like, Hmm, impressive. Now let's see China. You know, let's see the Chinese version. Yeah. Um, They're not going to have it. China doesn't have a gay kiss. China doesn't have kids on TikTok. And the kiss is actually a lesbian kiss, but I didn't fully read the article, but you see it. They have like the photo of the article and it's Buzz Lightyear and they Uh say gay kiss. And they're bait. That's like a passive coming at Buzz Lightyear Mm -hmm. because you can't just make Buzz Lightyear gay be too much uproar, but you can passively make him gay. So you put him as the thumbnail and say, oh, Buzz Lightyear, gay kiss restored. And everyone just goes, oh, okay, Buzz Lightyear's gay now. And they forfeit Buzz Lightyear. And if you do have an uproar, it's like, no, read the article. It's a lesbian kiss. It's lesbians in it kissing. Uh, to make everyone, you know, gaslit. But basically, they're coming for Buzz Lightyear in a passive way, and then their more active way is the actual lesbian kiss, if you look into it. But they're testing the waters on, are people ready just to forfeit Buzz Lightyear? And they pretty much are. And in 2026, Buzz Lightyear is going to be coming out to his class. He's going to be mm-hmm. nervous. Oh, I'm coming out to my class today. Moving on. Done with Disney. Uh, COVID section. Uh, Disney, you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. That's it. real rat shit. Pack up your shit and go home, Disney. You're done. Uh, our COVID section, this is an abbreviated COVID section because obviously COVID's been canceled and COVID's done. Everyone's focusing on the potential nuclear war now. Yeah, small detail. But um, last week we talked about how the PCR tests were flawed and they were misrepresenting the number of cases there were. Oh, yeah, of course. And then this week we found out that the deaths were off. They miscalculated the deaths because of a, quote, coding error. Yeah. So they so the, the, misrepresented the deaths of children and then the deaths of pretty much everybody. Yeah, both. Oops. So Oops. accidentally inflated children's COVID death numbers and coding logic error. And so let me just, I just want to uh, throw this out there. This is from a Reuters article, but uh, the adjustment, the adjustment bureau, Matt Damon, they're chasing after Matt Damon and he just lied to you about COVID, but the adjustment resulted in removal of 72,277 deaths previously reported across 26 states. Which, which also leads me to believe across 26 states, there are other states that haven't fixed the error yet or yeah. other states that, well, we'll get to it. They're, um, they're slow playing the rollout of how off they were. So the reduction cut the CDC's estimate of deaths in children. And this is just an estimate too, the estimate, um, by 24%. So a massive statistical amount. Uh, children accounted for about 19 percent of all COVID cases, but less than 0.26% of cases resulted in death, which is what we were saying the whole time. Don't mask the kids. Don't worry about it. Um, and so the U S that's just kids, 24%, but the U S uh, centers for disease control and prevention reported 966,575 deaths from COVID-19 on Friday after it corrected the data. So a little under a million, they took off 70, uh, 77,000, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like eight and a half percent or something like that. So these are not statistically insignificant items. These are huge swaths of data being pulled from the CDC death things, which is how they made their decision to force you to get the vaccine before you got fired. Yeah. So this is like the stuff that they're going to be slowly rolling out now that everyone's over COVID. They're going to just slowly let it go out to the public about how they were completely off about all these things. This one guy tweeted the article about the miscalculation and says, we were duped. I yeah. wasn't duped. I was never duped. I knew that shit was yeah. inflated. We, we were, were yelling at you the whole time that you're being duped for exactly this reason, but we were duped. We so, were making memes about like de- man died in motorcycle crash and it's like market is COVID. Like we yeah, were doing we this. We knew the whole time and we were telling you that you were getting duped and you didn't believe us. And so this is kind of something we've learned in our lives um, is that if you survive the initial freak out panic push, Eventually, everyone steps off the gas. COVID, Russia, Ukraine. Like, we have a friend who we hang out with who's always trying to hang out. And, like, they'll go, where are you guys? What are you guys doing? And it's like, if we go survive that, we're clear. You know, the the motivation stops. But it's just like you have to survive these tight, concentrated PR blitzes. And if you don't just – if you don't go, oh, my God – and you have to blindly follow whatever this, whatever Don Lemon says this yeah, time. Then you're probably going to be fine. Yeah. You know, the, the, this is the, the boy who cried wolf has just been crying wolf for years now. Um, and I'm not afraid of no wolf anymore. My sheep are fine. Yeah. So no one doesn't do you good to be scared of anything. Yeah. So if you guys want to keep getting scared, you know where to go for that. CNN, straight to Don Lemon. Uh, moving on. That was a quick COVID section. Moving on. Supreme Court pick. Kamala Jackson Brown. Yeah, Kentanji. 
Kentanji. Kentanji Brown Jackson. Um, uh, so she's about to, I mean, she'll probably be approved. I don't know. Knowing how we fight the, the Republicans, yeah. nothing's going to happen. And they're just going to put this person through. Remember what they did to Brett Kavanaugh? Remember they went through his yearbook and tried to find like his inside jokes. And they're like, this means gang rape. <laughs> <laughs> he he pooted or something. It was like a word for fart. And it's like, that's a gang raper. <laughs> That means gang rape. Everything meant gang rape. Christine Blasey Ford is like on the cover of magazines. Yeah, everything was a code word. They were trying to analyze all the code words to figure out where the how the gang raping was. I like to drink beer. Pedophile. Like <laughs> yeah. it's just And now this person, Kintaji Brown Jackson, is that right? Yeah, Kintanji Brown Jackson. Um so she actually has rulings where she's I been think a judge. I think they just chose this. I just got there now. KBJ. They just want another RBG. Like they want oh, another KBJ. Yeah. Don't let them get that. PR They're going to elevate her. Um, but yeah, so this lady actually has rulings where she's been lenient to child pornographers, people with possession and people that were making it. She was giving less sentences than were recommended by the prosecution. So not even like the state, just like less sentences than the people that they were up against wanted. Bad. Which is so bad. And then they blamed. If there's one thing I'd be lenient on. It wouldn't be that yeah, category. Yeah, it wouldn't be that one. Uh, so they completely came for Brett Kavanaugh, tried to ruin his life, to try to destroy his family, his reputation, every single thing based on nothing. And now this person who actually has a questionable track record, no one's going to do anything because we don't play to win. Yep. We don't play to win. We play to look like we tried. And then we say, oh, look what the Democrats are doing. They're crazy. Let's raise some money to fight back against the Democrats. Look how crazy they are. But when we're in power, we don't actually do anything. All we do is make it look like we're trying and then look how bad they are. And like we have all these morals. But like the left doesn't care. They take power and they do whatever they want. Yeah. They come after their political enemies. They do it. And it's like, oh, we don't do that. We're they the gloat moral. about it. Yeah. And we're the we're the moral high ground people. We don't do that. We do the right thing. And we just get our lunch eaten every week by these people who want to kill us. Yeah. And we don't fight back, even though they're breaking the rules. So they break the rules, but it's okay. We stick to our val- our values and morals. They get and get smoked. We don't play the rule by the rules, and we get smoked. They steal an election. They do all this stuff, and we just watch it. They ruin our lives with COVID, and we just watch it. Um, and now with this Supreme Court pick, they're probably going to put her through without even that much of a, some, not even that much flack. Well, it, it it's interesting because to me, it's like a big dog and pony show. It's yeah. such a team thing that it's like it doesn't matter. Who it doesn't matter the opposing arguments. The Democrats are moving forward no matter what. Yeah, and it's funny because to me it comes down to like, well, are you convincing Joe Manchin? Are mm-hmm. you convincing Kristen Cinema? Like the borderline people who might be offended at some of this stuff. Um, so it's it really comes down to like two or three people. But it is just a show. Look how Cory Booker talks. Remember what they did with Brett Kavanaugh. This is how Cory Booker talks to Judge Brown Jackson. Behind you and your family is your daughter, Layla. He's like about to cry. And when she was 11 years old, she wrote a letter to President Obama <laughs> urging him to nominate his mo- her, her mother, you, to the United States Supreme Court. I suspect after these proceedings, and please God, after your confirmation to the Supreme Court, something new will happen in America that that letter from your daughter will not be exceptional, whether they're daughters of white parents or black parents or biracial. So it all becomes like, oh, this is a black thing. Meanwhile, Clarence race- Thomas is already black and on the Supreme Court, but now it's a black thing. And it's like, oh, your family's here. They're going to watch you get approved. We're already skipping all the steps. Why aren't, why aren't we accused her of anything? Yeah. Why aren't we going through every single hearing and judgment she's ever done and pick it apart like we can't? Because we won't, but they do it to us and we go, oh man, they're so mean. They're so mean. They're ignoring all the good stuff. They're so mean to us. They don't play by the rules. And now they just run one right past us and Cory Booker pretends to cry. Oh, your daughter isn't behind you. It's like, shut God must up. go to acting classes. That's unreal. He must do something because he was very offended. And look how this other guy, I don't know his name, the guy with the, with the big fro. This is how he was talking about Brett Kavanaugh. This is how he's talking about Kavanaugh versus how he's talking about this new lady. Is it telling the truth? Oh, how can he defend himself? He doesn't know who she is even. He knows who she is. Yeah. He remembers mm-hmm. the party. I remember, the, I remember every single girl I passed a note to in chemistry class. Right. All right? He knows who she is. To have a normal kind of above board hearing, let her be confirmed so she doesn't change the balance of power of the court anyway and go back to talking about the things that work for them, you know, go back to crying about gas prices or, 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 or talking about Hunter Biden's laptop. 
So yeah, that's the that's the attitude now. Let's just get her approved. It's not even a big deal. Let's just move on to the other things we're distracted by. Just openly saying it, but with Brett Kavanaugh, you remember that night, that gang <laughs> that rape fake party, made up night that never. When you were in high school, you remember the absolute Muppets. Um, and then, so yeah, that's what I mean. It's like it's a team. the The people who are on your team are going to fight for your thing, and that's it. And it it can go on without you, without you being able to stop it. You yeah, know? we need fighters back. That's why Trump was so good. He actually fought, and he wouldn't like with Kavanaugh. A lot of people were like, "We should just pick someone else." They're going crazy on him. And it's like, for you know what? Sacrifice people to this mob that's never going to be satiated. Ever. So, and then it's everyone. All, and then what, what would they do if we uh, rescinded Kavanaugh's nomination and nominated somebody they'd else? They'd approve the next guy. They, oh, they'd approve him too. Yeah. Yeah. That'd exactly. Be great. And um, it's interesting too because a lot of this craziness has happened in the. Mo- uh, it's like accelerating how crazy things are getting. Like 10 years ago, being against same sex marriage like wasn't a big deal, right? Not at all. And now it's like the number one thing and everyone has to be for it. And everyone it feels like uh, online, especially a lot of people are commenting that the world got crazier. We stayed the same. That's like the I world feel. went further left, more quote progressive off the rails, completely parabolic. They went nuts. And like, we just kind of stayed more true to our values and kind of like settled <clears throat> in and like dug our boots in a little bit and like really sat into what we believe in our values while every, while everyone else like created this huge storm around us. It's also funny to see and frustrating to see how many people change with the time. Like, yeah. what, like did you not have anything b- to base your beliefs on before? Mm-hmm. Like what, what were you just flapping in the yeah. breeze waiting for like, Oh, there's my orders. Those are my marching orders. I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, exactly. I'll cash my check. My like, 15. So these manic losers are like up to bat now and they're coming for us. And it's interesting too. There was a survey done in Canada about the reaction to Ukraine, Russia. What should they do? Should they provide weapons? No, um, no fly zones, get involved directly. Yeah. And basically all of the vaccinated people were calling for like authoritarian overreach. We shouldn't, you know, we have a no fly zone. Tougher sanctions, seize the assets. Exactly. Seize the assets, tougher sanctions, no fly zones. The vaccinated scared people were willing to do that. While the unvaccinated people for the most part were like, let's not get involved. We have none of the above. Let's not do none of the above. So it's like, that's what we're dealing with here. It's like the scared people have gotten so wound up and so crazy and so off the rails, they're scared. And the people who they're scared of are the people who are not in that same group think mindset. So the people who aren't afraid are who they're afraid of. So now they're calling for government overreach. Forget our rights, forget the constitution, forget whatever we had in place before this. We need to protect ourselves from the bad people. And that's like what we're up against here. And we see it in every single facet of society. And so Republicans have been asking some pointed questions about uh, in the Supreme Court confirmation process. Like um, one was, what is a woman? Yeah. To the judge. What and is a goes, woman? I can't define that. I'm not a biologist. And it's like, well, the biologists aren't the one who are unable to define it. Yeah, They exactly. define it pretty quickly. That's actually a good point. At least she's even saying the biologists know. Yeah. What a woman is. Well, it's like, that's not the reason you're not answering. It's the gender obsessed academic weirdos. That's um, so true. So, and I yeah. bet they can find a biologist who will say, well, there's no such thing as a woman. Oh, they find a priest who says God's non- non-binary and gay. So they can find pretty much anything guys. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she didn't even, she couldn't even say what a woman was. So we'll see. I mean, hopefully Joe Manchin doesn't like what he hears when he goes, a woman, you can't define a woman. And then somebody withholds their vote or uh, something. And then maybe the Republicans take back the Senate yeah. and we can string it out and just uh, get yeah. someone else because this person would be a train wreck. Absolute train wreck. Um, and everyone will be saying it's racist. It's anti-woman. If you can't define black. a woman, are you not going to be an activist judge? Are you not going to just like go do whatever you want, interpret the law however it fits your political party? The most party? basic question on earth, you can't answer that. So it's like, oh, you're going to be a judgment of truth? Isn't you're all, a judge? Yeah. Isn't all law like based on like a fixed definition of something? And then it's like, well, what did that word mean in the contract? And yeah. It's like it has to mean something incredibly specific. But now nah, woman, woman doesn't mean anything. It's nothing. Yep. So they're going to push it through because they want to Is Leah Thomas win. a champion? That's yeah, right. is Leah just, Thomas a woman? And well, the, what would the judge say? I, I'm done. I'm done asking questions about the uh, your legal history, and I'm just doing like 
pulse checks. You know, like, <laughs> is Leah Thomas good? What do you think of Rachel Levine? You know, 81 million votes for Joe Biden. That, does that ring true to you? <laughs> you um, start throwing out vibe so checks. The, the Democrats just do what they want. They just put, you know, will themselves to success. They don't, they know how to win. They'll lie, they'll obscure. They know how to win and they're going to do it. And that's what we see all over the, the, the world. Ukraine, we're getting to our Ukraine section. Zelensky. Just got rid of a lot of the opposing parties. Yeah, no, all the Russian linked political yeah, parties. Oh, everyone are who gone has ties now. to Russia, now you're gone. And that's what people who want to win do. And I actually admire that. Yeah. Because they're, they're the bad guys, so it's unfortunate. But if the good guys acted like that, that I admire that because you can't say, oh, you're saying the good guys should, you know, take power and be authoritarian or whatever. But it's like you're already OK with that leftist. Yeah, it's happening everywhere. Trudeau, Zelensky. Yeah, Joe Biden. you're OK with it as long as it's on your team. So it's like if you're OK with it, then we're OK with it, too. And now we'll let it be our guys doing it. Yeah, exactly. I wish I, I don't really believe in the rules, because once you break the rules, if you're in a fight, if you're in a say you're and someone in, kicks you in the nuts. Yeah. Say you're in a football match, football match football game what do you mean <laughs> i played football my whole life i call it a football match you're basketball in a basketball goal you're in a football <laughs> game and the guy across from you is scratching you and pinching you and biting you and doing all this stuff mm -hmm. you got to get him back however you can whenever there's an opportunity you got to get him back and that's how i play and if people don't want to play like that you can have fun getting your lunch eaten by these manic morons you want to see some nice uh, bubble bursters for uh, the Ukraine-Russia situation? Of course. All right. So there's two. Um, number one, headline, Ukraine blocks trans women refugees. They are men, must go back and fight. <laughs> the Ukrainian government is refusing to allow transgender women to leave the country, along with the millions of women and children refugees, blah, blah, blah. So they're just like, get out of the line. Ingrid or whatever your yeah. name is, come back. And they also have like they also have like these little disclosures. I think it was on the Peace Corps website where it's like if you go volunteer over there, they'll they'll call black people the N word. Yeah, and they'll call them like racial terms and like bad names. Hold on, I want to read the quote from the trans uh, thing. Uh, there's a quote: "Ukrainian border guards undress you and touch you everywhere." Judas says, "You can see on their faces they're." They're wondering, what are you? Like you're some kind of animal or something. Mm. It's like checking for dicks before you flee the country. <laughs> like, if you got one, you got to go back. Hey, I guess this is a worldwide, the trans thing's a worldwide thing. And then they also do, so they say some racist stuff too. So it's like the left is Do you want me to read the? Yeah, read, the, read a quote from that. This is too funny. So this is from the Peace Corps the Peace Corps website. It is not uncommon for Ukrainian refer, to refer to African-Americans as N-word. Volunteers of color may be called a monkey or may see children's games with blackface. Again, this is a quote from the Peace Corps. Being aware of the history of dehumanization for people of African descent may help inform where this comes from. It does not justify it. It will be at your discretion to determine the intent, blah, blah, blah. But like, hey, just so you know, they might call you the N-word. Yeah. Go fight. They might call you a monkey in the N-word. Yeah, go help them though. Uh, and also, the there's like there's generals on uh, Ukraine side that gave the orders to castrate Russian prisoners of war. So it's like if you're a leftist, you want me to play that? No, you don't have to. They, we, everyone's probably seen yeah, it. The but if you're a leftist supporting Ukraine, you have to kind of support at times racist, anti-trans, literal Nazis, literal Nazi battalion. So but, yeah, so it's like you know you have to Slava not, Ukraine. Not every time, not every time you have to, it has to be, you have to be selective and there's, you know, you have to look at it in context. You have to flush it out a little bit mm -hmm. when you call Americans Nazis and pretend that January 6th people were so bad, but now you have this and now you have to, you know, oh, we support a little Nazis here and there. And then did you see that, uh, some more Redditors got some more Ukrainians killed? Oh yeah. From posting content. We were talking about that last week. Yeah. Well, there was another one, this guy, it's a video of a Ukrainian playing a violin and like, wow, this is so beautiful in the face of all this. We're still playing a violin. And then 4chan posted some pics of like that building with a, a recognizable support beam just blown out um, mm. because the metadata so the, was on there. The Redditors had metadata on the post and they were posting some like thing that they thought was going to be like, yeah, Ukraine, we're here. Huge for morale, huge boost. And they all got blown out like we literally said last week. Yep. So Which, you'll see that on Tucker in like seven days or something. Yeah, ex exactly. Um, where are all the videos from Russia, Ukraine? A lot of people have been DMing me and asking me that. Like, where's it, Snapchat? Where's anything? It's like there's all these people, there's millions of people there with phones on social media. Yeah. 
And they all have it. And people are like, oh, you're just not looking for it. You're just not seeing it. It's like, I'm pretty much tapped into every video ever. I'm scrounging. And I'm... I don't see anything. You think there would be tons. I don't see anything. So that's weird. That's weird to me. Yeah, that's a red flag, if you will. Uh, Candace got into a fight with uh, the New York Times. This is actually a great um, back and forth. She was saying how Ukraine's corrupt and what are we getting involved in? Why are we doing this? How is this America's best interest? Then the New York Times reaches out to her and they're like, uh, you said Ukraine's corrupt. Do you care to expand on that? Yeah, it's like these emails from the press are always like half threats. Like, you know where we're going to shoot you, right? Yeah. Like, you got any armor on your leg like with a gun? Because it's like. It's it's just so slanted, you know? Uh, hi there, I'm writing from the New York Times. We're working on a story about Russian messaging that includes some of your comments. We note that you advanced the idea of Ukraine was a corrupt country, which matched comments we've seen from Russian state media. Well, is it true or does it just match? Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the writer goes, I'm wondering if you have any context or further comment to add about this comparison. We are finalizing the story today. And it's always like, a, we're about to drop a bomb on you. Any comment? <laughs> Muppet, you, you know, didn't know in 20 minutes. And then so Candace obviously clapped back extremely hard and said and sent them their own articles about at, all the corruption in about Ukraine. All the corruption in Ukraine goes, ah, yeah, I have the receipts. So, yeah. So we love to see that. And it's just the same example as Disney. New York Times is an established corporation that established itself by being fair and honest for mm -hmm. all these years, build its credibility up, and then bam, I don't tentacle in deep state. Bad. I don't, sorry. I don't think there's a single journalist out there anymore who goes into a situation just open-minded and being like, I'll see what the what the information gives me, and then I'll write up my piece. And if they are, they're extremely hard to find mm -hmm. because it's just like, all right, I'm doing a propaganda hit piece about how right-wingers are doing Russian propaganda. Let's go swing on Candace. And it's like, dude, you told me this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when we – yeah, when I started doing street videos and going out – it wasn't to do that for the other side. It was literally just interviewing people and hearing what they're saying and give like a neutral, but like I had my own biases. And then that ended up being real journalism. Compared but you to went like, out there. Yeah, exactly. Like, you showed I was them. like, oh, like, what are you doing here? And let them talk and then showed what they said. Yeah. Not like, oh, I'm going to pull one word out and then pretend you guys are all Nazis or whatever they yeah. do. <laughs> um, and then also there was a, um, before we move on from the Reddit part, there was a message sent to Putin um, it was the, from this guy right here. Oh yeah, that was a good message. Yeah, this is strong. Nick. I hope Putin doesn't see this. <laughs> Putin, Putin's just looking down on his phone. Fuck. <laughs> Special message for Vladimir Putin. Oh, I hope Putin God. doesn't see this. This is it would be devastating for the Russians. Some American bitch boy painted his nails. <laughs> yeah, oh my some God. American. Yeah, for the audio only, it's some American bitch boy, soy boy with Ukraine flag painted on his nails. Yeah. And he says, fuck Vladimir Putin or whatever. Uh, last thing of Ukraine that we want to touch on this week. You think any, hold on. Do you think Redditors are going to keep getting people killed? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, but I think I, people I think are so going to so. stop showing up. Yeah, me too. Which is smart, and you, no one should go there. Me too. Uh, Did you see that meme? Hold on, before we get into this, where it's like, uh, oh, I planned on you. It's like some beta guy who's joining the volunteers. It's like I planned on using my uh, military history to be to advise generals, and it's like go out in that field and draw the sniper fire, like, <laughs> yeah. like re expectations versus reality. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so when you listen to propaganda and then go, oh my god, the ghost of Kiev has our backs, like. We're going to go free, fight for freedom. The Marvel characters always win. Uh, moving on to Urban Decay. Sure. We have an Urban Decay section that's very good. Number one, the Walmart rape attempt. Jesus. This was crazy. This was in Miami. Miami is just not where you want to be for spring break. There's too many people that don't know how to act. This is like in a packed Walmart. Apparently. During the day, yeah. This guy thought he was going to get a rape in. And thank God there's some strong men around. Because Ooh, wrestle him. Leah Thomas can't do that. Or actually, yeah, she yeah, can. He can. Yes, she can. <laughs> so this big guy, they're fighting him. They're fighting him. And so apparently this guy was just on top of this woman in a dress. So it was like, flip the dress, like get on top of her. I don't know what how far along this guy was. But it was like in a Walmart. And so there's a, a piece of my brain that immediately goes to like, would this have happened four years ago? If there wasn't constant lawlessness, coverage of lawlessness, looting, shopping, whatever, no faith in police coming, 
Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the like bad guys are feeling protected. It, emboldened, right? Very emboldened. This is also just kind of going along with Miami lawlessness and like Spirit Airlines type behavior. Mm. And um, so Miami has had a bunch of shootings. It's obviously spring break right now. The police are begging for help. They're all exhausted as usual because, you know, the consumerism takes precedence because they get about, you know, a Miami hotel tax of this or that. They make about $3 billion from spring break or whatever it is. Um, and so now there's a curfew in place at midnight come on the upcoming mm, weekend. So of all the violence. So don't go to Miami during spring break. Go to a nice place where uh, old people go, you know? Yeah, exactly. Go visit your grandparents. Yep. Uh, Number two, the housing first thread. This was a thread I came across because we talked about this before, how in L.A. they try to do like the homeless housing and they give houses to homeless people and they gave like, I think it was like hundreds of thousands of dollars of value in an apartment per person. Yeah. And I was living in some like loft I could barely afford <laughs> and everyone else got like a $700,000 apartment for free. You should have done heroin, bro. Yeah. Or should have at least looked like I was doing heroin. Um, I think that's what we're going to see. That's exactly like more fake addiction. Like, hey, can I get that loft apartment? I just on- need a place in the middle of downtown. <laughs> right downtown. So right do I. I need a place in the middle of downtown too. Uh, but listen to this thread. Rap Boy's got some highlights from it about the problem with these giveaway our apartments to homeless people situations. Yeah. So this is a guy who is 24 and he was working for one of these types of nonprofits. So it said, working for a housing first nonprofit in San Diego showed me firsthand how giving homeless individuals an apartment in downtown and paying their rent for nine months doesn't actually help anything and eventually makes their situation and the overall homelessness situation worse. And he says, I work directly with veterans and part of the housing first model means our organization our organization did not require the client to be sober in order to receive or maintain housing slash general services. At first, this sounded right to me. Like everybody, like every leftist, you know, that's like, we got to get them off the streets. Yeah, we got uh, problems, we got to help them. Yeah. This sounded right to me. But after looking over 50 homeless veterans, Uh, After housing over 50 homeless veterans and seeing literally all of them back on the street with their continued addiction, after our nine months of rental assistance was finished, I realized this was a toxic cycle. Each client had a case manager who worked with them during uh, during our nine months of rental assistance to get them to find work or help them find services to aid their drug problem. But once we found housing, the clients wouldn't be as responsive, sometimes not answering calls for months. You gave me a house. Bye. Yeah, I would never. I'm doing the call. drugs in it. Yeah, um, I would never answer the call again. It says after nine months was up, the client would then just hop to a new housing first provider and find another new apartment in downtown San Diego and begin the cycle again. So, uh, when I got to see this progressive policy in action, I quickly realized not only is it not progressive, but it makes the client more reliant on others for help instead of building that person up to become someone who is self-sufficient and a contributing member of society. So that you can jump from like these programs to these other programs and just get a house for nine months, then you're done. Next one, start over again, then you're done. And you yeah. just jump from place to place. I'm going to the Facebook commune now, you know, yeah. like the corporate money that pays for all this and enables all this. It's really sad. It is. It is. And there's people that actually do need help who are trying to become productive members of society. And you can't help them. Remember tough love? Yeah, that was important. I thought. It. it I. Th- I thought it worked. Mm-hmm. And now you don't. It's the. It's the opposite. It's soft love. It's please. It's like please don't do drugs while you're in your niece's apartment. Here's a bunch of food. Like, Here's needles if you do. Yeah, Here's a crack pipe the, if you do. The Joe Biden crack kit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but please don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough situation. Uh, last piece of urban decay, which also could have been. This could also be uplifting gold. Okay. So we're coming into our uplifting gold section. So this is where urban decay and uplifting gold meet. What video are you this talking about? This is the stealing gas guy. <laughs> this is uplifting gold. It could be. So it's a guy getting caught stealing gas, and this is how he reacts. What are you doing? I'm sorry, dude. I got to get some gas. I'm sorry, brother Dan. I just ran out of gas. So I was going to get a net to go to the fucking gas station. So you're going to take mine? A little. I'm, I was, sorry, dude. Dude. I'm sorry, dude. It seriously was. That's serious, a fucking I'm scumbag. Sorry. I don't uh, think that's any uplifting gold. I, I think that was funny how he's just like, yeah, you caught me. It's fun. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's funny seeing someone caught red-handed, but that guy's a scumbag, you know? Yep. So with this. I saw a meme of the gas, uh, some guy with a ring camera on his gas thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like just, and people locking him. Yeah. I thought it was funny. It's just like, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I was stealing your gas. Yeah, you caught me. You know how it is. 
<laughs> you know how things are out there. And it, it's pe- people have a hard time. And inflation has been hard on people. So I went through a list. I listed five things to do, plus a little bonus item, to improve your situation when it comes to inflation. Here are some things to do to fight back against inflation. Number one, continue to hold all your moon coins and Brandon tokens. <laughs> That's number one. You can't get liquidated now at all time lows. Everyone knows that. Number two, never order Uber Eats three times in one day again. That's it. Starting now. We need that to stop. Number three, we need money go up. That's important for this whole thing. Money go up, inflation ain't so bad. Stock market go up. But we need money go up. Number four, someone has to cut Jerry's nails. Not it. That's Uh, you. (laughs) That's you. (laughs) That's Uh, an inflation tip? Number five, coin flips. That's 50-50 50, odds. 50-50 50, odds, exactly. Did anyone ever tell you that 50-50 odds coin flip is a stupid thing to go off of? Because it's not. Best you get at the casino is like 49%, right? 50-50. So anyone who tells you that's a bad bet is lying. Then the And then obviously the bonus is less seafood towers for two. You can't do that more than once a week. It's going to be too much. That's how you kind of... Uh, that has to be a once a week thing. That's how you beat inflation. Smart. In my mind. I'm just going to eat lentils. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, yeah. Eat lentils is the advice. I'm just going to eat lentils and like just let my body get weak and then maybe I'll have less fight in me. And then, and when, then yeah. you know, uh, and then I'll let my Netflix and uh, Facebook and all the overlords, I'll just let them tell me what to do. Yeah. Eat your lentils, be weak. So when they really do the bad stuff again, there's no one to stop them. Yeah. Lentils is weird because I've always not eaten them because it tastes like ground up earthworms. Yeah. So I've always not eaten lentils. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't like eating worms like that. I've The only context in which I've eaten uh, lentils is uh, in some Indian food in gloop. Like it's, it's yeah. like, and it's spiced to the t- creamy, spicy, whatever. It's the worst part of the samosa. Yeah. Exactly. That's what lentils are to me. So I guess we have to start making that our plan a option. Uh, we, we live off lentils now. So, a coin flip is always a good bet. Richard Rapway, $20 coin flip right now. Sure. We'll use this coin flip simulator. Heads or tails? Heads. It is heads. So I lost that. So I'm mathematically obligated to run it back. Okay. So I can't keep losing. Okay. Heads or tails? Tails. It is heads. Now I won. Now I'm going to go on a streak and drain this guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's the mindset, guys. That's how you get out of inflation. Take the odds where you got them. Just start degenerately gambling. 50-50. Take, take a crazy risk. I used to work, uh, I used to have a finance job. I used to work on Wall Street and the guy next to me and I would do coin flips for 20 bucks each and we would take five coins at once and shake them and go like that. So you could go up 100 or down 100? Up 100, down 100. You go up 20 or down 20 and then up 80. Well, you could go any denomination, right? Well, I think it's like if it's three heads, two tails. So it's like 20, 80 or 100. Gotcha. It's a good game. 100 is crazy. Yeah. And there's times where it's all heads and you did it. (laughs) Um, But there's times where it's all tails and you got smoked. And inflation's going to choke you out. Mm -hmm. All right. On to the uplifting gold section, the section where we remember what life's all about. Wait, can we go back to the lentils part? Sure. One of the pieces of advice on that Bloomberg article was don't buy in bulk. They're trying to starve us. Have you seen the prices at Costco? Are you kidding me? Like, how is that not just the exact terrible advice? It's horrible advice. And it's also ride the bus while the street rats they gave free houses to. Yeah. Ride the bus in Seattle. Hope you don't get a baseball bat to your head. And like, if you do, you can't, us- if you can't defend yourself because you've been eating beans. Yeah, you're weak <laughs> on lentils and beans and you're like, I better get on the bus. Wearing a mask. And then somebody who obviously doesn't deal with inflation because they just steal comes and baseball bats you in the back of the head. It's so, an Airbus now. That's the vision for the new world order. Yep. But- do not fret. There is uplifting gold out in the world that we need to see and remember what life's all about. Our first guy is our homie, 50 Pants. Let's check him out. Let him run. This is my man, 50 Pants, man. You know what I'm saying? This is hard work out here, man. This is 50 Pants, everybody. And what's the lesson here? What's the metaphor? There's a lane for everybody. That guy did the 50 Pants thing. Did you think that up? You probably don't even own 50 Pants. There's a lane for everybody. There's a way for everybody. What would I do? I, I mean, 60 pants. I bet the stank under that is just unbelievable. <laughs> That's just all his pants. It's the homie 50 pants right here. It's not that uplifting. That's yeah. pretty sad. So instead of wondering, well, what can I do? Oh, my voice isn't being heard. There's a lane for everybody. And while you're complaining and thinking small, people are out there eating your lunch who are less talented than you. So how does that feel? 
Uplifting gold section. <laughs> Uplifting gold section number two. The bowling high five. This is my favorite. Guy bowls, bro picks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> picks up a spare. Bam. Little homie. Little homie gets backpacked up. <laughs> backpacked up. We need Hezbollah to see this. Hezbollah, yep. look at look at this. Yep. You need to see. Uh, number three, um, the fat wrestler. The Fleckus. I have now the Fleckus. Richard Rapboy. Who does this look exactly like, Richard Rapboy? One you, Austin. You. Austin. Fleckus. It looks exactly like Richard Rapboy. Here's Richard Rapboy. Looks like jumping up. Oh my God. The whole thing shakes. And the whole world shakes. That's better than midget wrestling, to be honest. Um, Fleckus has this thing. I don't know if I've ever told this story, but um, you know how the Genghis Khan type uh, is Fleckus? Like, if we see a really fat guy, like, even fatter. Sorry, that was too rude. If you see a real fat guy um, on TV and he's got a beard and he's got dark hair, Fleckus will go, oh, my God, that's you, before you can get to it. <laughs> I get ahead of it. So then they go, no, that's you. And it's like, oh, real original. Yeah, You're calling him me after I called it you? <laughs> oh, good one. But it was me the whole time. Yep. It's a gaslight. It's like a false flag gaslight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. That's the end of the show. That's the end of the Uplifting Gold section. Nice and brief, but we think we learned a lot with that 50 pants thing. Yeah. I think we did. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you're still watching and you love the show and you want more show, we have a bonus land starting in like 30 seconds. Patreon.com slash Fleckus. We'll give you the Dave Rubin take. The gay Dave Rubin. The gay, the gay Dave Rubin. <laughs> the Dave Rubin the two take. Two Davids and two babies take. Yep. We'll give you that take and a bunch of other stuff as well. We'll talk some trash on pit bulls. Uh, it's it's a good section of the show that we did not get the time to cover here. Links are in the description for that. Chopfuckus.com for the best merch of the game. And subscribe to the Fleckus Clips channel. It's very important. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one. Peace.